On to UCLA. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the South Carolina game, and, and certainly I think what stands out there is, uh, you know, not getting off to a fast start, getting off to a slow start, but, um, you know, certainly, um, you know, showed our resolve and resilience in, in coming back um, on the road against an SEC opponent. And, you know, certainly you, don't want, you want to play better, uh, mistake-free football, uh, there was enough mistakes that, you know, we have plenty to correct. We have plenty to coach to. We have plenty of things that we need to get better at. Um, but having said that, you know, we won the football game. Um, we outscored them uh, in the second half. And and in doing so, um, you know, we're able to come up with, um, you know, a hard-fought victory on the road. You know, certainly... Um, you know, some individual performances, uh, you know, we had a young freshman come in and, and play really well for us and, and Caden Durham. Um, you know, certainly Braden Swinson needs to be acknowledged that he was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Um, you know, I, I think what's, what's important is, you know, from, you know, uh, an entire team standpoint, you know, to win games like that, uh, you have to understand habits have a lot to do with it. Winning's a habit and losing's a habit. And if you have losing habits, you can't win those games. Um, this group has the right habits. Now we have to be able to um, clean up the things technically. And, and, and they really come down to three things. Um, personnel, um, the the coaching of the schemes themselves. Are we in the right schemes for our players? And then the preparation uh, of such. And, and so it's one of those three things. And, and so we have to consider all those three things moving forward relative to the personnel, the schemes themselves, and certainly the preparation. And, and that's the work that's in front of us. We have to continue to work towards that. And Look, when you when you have two first year coordinators, they're they're learning their personnel, uh, who they want to use, um, who are the best eleven uh, in in each situation, and then what schemes put us in the best position to succeed, and then now we'll have to go and prepare accordingly. And you know, I wish we could have done that in preseason camp, but we didn't know a lot about you know who were those best players for that situation. And it's becoming a lot clearer. I think we're a lot closer um, to finding those things out. And we continue to, um, to look for um, you know, getting better in those areas. So that's the South Carolina game. There's a lot of things that have to get better there. We'll get them better uh, as we kind of transition to coming back at home against UCLA, um, a team that um, – you know, obviously, you know, we played in 21. Um, they beat us out there in, in 21. We get a chance on the, the back end of this uh, home and home uh, to play them in Tiger Stadium. We're excited to be back at home uh, playing uh, on ABC at 2.30. And, um, you know, a team that, that has a lot of veterans. I mean, it's incredible when you look at, you know, just playing a, a, a South Carolina team that had six-year players and fifth year players you know this defense has a a number of similar players in terms of I don't know that there's a freshman or a sophomore on their defense this is a veteran defense a lot of a lot of guys transferring in a lot of veteran players um, on their defense um, big defensive linemen um, athletic linebackers Medrano is all over the field um, and, then, and then from a defensive backfield, guys with a lot of experience back on the back end of their defense. Um, you know, Garbers, the quarterback transferred from Washington, has played a lot of football, um, and, and they've got some talented receivers in Sturdivant and, and Flores. Um, Harden is rushed for a lot of yards. He, he knows their system well. Eric Bieniemy is an outstanding play caller, veteran play caller. Um, you know, I, you know, again, I, I look at, you know, this kind of matchup with a team that, you know, it's, they're, they're going through the same thing. They've been at it, you know, two games, right? They've got two games, and, you know, Deshaun Foster is certainly 
uh, UCLA grad. He loves his program. He's going to have them playing well on the road. And, again, this is a lot about us and, and how we clean up the things that we need to clean up to be a better football team uh, playing against now, um, you know, a Big Ten opponent um, that, that wants to obviously go on the road. And as we've seen, um, everybody's going to play their best against LSU. So we'll be prepared for that. So that will open up the questions. Coach, the um, schematic and personnel changes you made on defense, did, did they have the desired effect, and do you plan to stick with them moving forward? We, we haven't, you know, we, we're, we're going to look at everything, and, and we're still in that process of evaluating um, everything, right, in terms of what we're coaching, how we're coaching it, you know, what players uh, need to be on the field in certain situations, you know, what is our, you know, uh, you know, offense look like in certain situations. I mean, all of that needs to be uh, looked at carefully. I think we've done a, a deep dive on all of it, um, but I'm not ready to kind of publicly talk about what we're going to be doing moving forward. Hey, Coach, a lot of discussion about the two interceptions South Carolina had and ran back. They were called back because of penalty, in particular the second one. What did you see uh, after looking at it? You know, I saw a push off uh, in the USC game that that was never called uh, late in the game against USC. Um, so you get my point, right? I mean, there's there's calls in every game. I didn't stand here in front of you guys and complain about that call, right? I mean, we could take every game that we play and we can micromanage every call that wasn't called or was called. Um, they look like fouls to me, um, but I'm not here each and every week, you know, to complain about calls or not complain about calls. Games are won by the players and lost by the players. If it gets down to that, you know, um, call me out on it. Um, you win and lose at the end of the day based upon um, coaches and players. And the other things um, I haven't seen in my years coaching that officiate, officiating – uh, decides a game. Ryan, uh, you're, is your you're feeling coming out of the game any different or what, what you have to work on other than the fact, is it colored by the fact that you guys won the game? I know you said yeah, winning has become a habit, but otherwise, you know, how you felt about the way you guys performed, is that any different based on the fact that you won by three? We beat South Carolina on the road in a sold-out stadium in the SEC um, against the team that um, beat the pants off of Kentucky who played Georgia right to the end. So if we want to do that game, um, you know, I guess we're going to beat Georgia by a lot um, if that's how you guys want to play this thing. The reality of it is it's hard to win on the road. And given the fact that we made a lot of mistakes, we still found a way to win that football game. That's incredible resolve and resilience amongst your group. You know, to keep your group, your young guys together, we had a lot of freshmen out there. We had a lot of young guys playing, and they kept playing. They kept believing. Um, I can build off of that. Do we want to play cleaner? Yes. But at the end of the day, that was a good South Carolina football team. That was a good defense. We scored 36 points, and, and I think everybody watched the game. We didn't score inside the five twice. <laughs> You just score those two touchdowns, which are, I think, an 87 or 88 percent chance of scoring touchdowns in that area. That's 50 points. So we're not that far off. We're not that far off. And if we make the two plays that we should make, just you know, being fundamentally sound on the two run plays, we're going to give up less than 250 yards in total offense. So we're really close. And I'm not here to make you guys feel better. Um, you guys are going to evaluate it and write the way you write it, but I know what we see and, and I know how we feel about what we need to do. We left 14 points out, out, out there and, and could have scored a lot more and scored 36 on the road when we were down. We, we took control of the game in the second half with all those mistakes. Over here uh, on your right. Hey. Uh, so as you prepare for your second Big Ten opponent in the first month of the season, wondering, you know, do you think the value of these games to a power conference team is improved when ostensibly 
a team from the SEC could lose every single one of its non-conference games and then win the SEC and still get in the 12-team playoff. Yeah, I, I, I think that analogy is valid, but I don't know that that's particularly, um, you know, likely, you know, because to lose to two Big Ten teams and then win the SEC championship seems to be a, a hard reach, right? I think these games were scheduled way before, you know, the the conference realignment. And, and so, um, you know, I don't think that that really had – the kind of thought process. These, these were games that were, you know, really thought for um, the USC game in particular um, was, was a kind of a, you know, a start the season off game. It wasn't thought of as a, a Big Ten matchup, right? And then the UCLA game was a, you know, certainly an arrangement between a home and home needing another game. And, and so I just don't think it was seen with that kind of vision I understand the question, um, but I think we've answered it before that, you know, these games will be looked at differently moving forward than they were prior to when they were put on the schedule. Uh, yeah, hey, Coach, right here. Um, you, you guys have been hit with a couple of those defensive line delay of game movement calls these first couple of weeks. I'm just curious as to what the explanation was on these. Yeah. And kind of what your understanding of the rules. Yeah, was. they were valid. Uh, the first one – um, we, we clapped to move our front, and you can't clap when the cadence is a clap. And that was just a mistake uh, made by one of our linebackers. He was trying to get somebody's attention, and you just can't do that. The other one was, was our, our, one of our defensive ends was moving, and as, as he moved, he moved his arms. And, and that is not a natural movement when you're sliding the front. So because he was in a two-point and he moved his arms, they considered that an unnatural movement. And so we've coached our guys up on that. It has to be a natural movement. You can't have something unnatural uh, relative to the movement of your front. So we agree with, with the decision in that, and we've really coached our guys hard on that movement has to be synchronized. It has to be natural. It can't be an unnatural movement. Hey, Brian. Could you give us an update on injuries, Zai in particular? And then I understand your point about, you know, figuring out the personnel, I guess. Could you explain maybe in depth why that is necessary, you know, what it takes in seeing game film versus just fall camp? Yeah, again, I, I think when you have first-year coordinators, they're still figuring out their personnel. And, and, and as they're putting in their packages and, and getting into game situations, you know, this is our first SEC opponent, um, and going on the road and that kind of atmosphere, you, you want to be able to see how your guys hold up to those situations. And, and I'm not saying we're making wholesale changes, but, you know, they get a chance to evaluate their personnel. And, and the, the big takeaway here is when, when you're making mistakes, it is are you putting your guys in the right position? Do you have the guys in the right position, Right. And then are you preparing them for those scenarios? It, it can only be one of those three things. And so all of those are on the table. So this isn't about a press conference that Coach Kelly is making wholesale changes. It's just one of the three options that we have to be able to consider, as well as do we need to do things differently relative to particular schemes? Look, I've already made it clear. We've left three touchdowns on the board inside the five-yard line. We have to clearly look at that scheme. We have to look at what we're doing in that area. That's on coaching, right? Um, and so all of those things are on the table that we have to clean up from that pers perspective. And there was another part of the question. Yeah, I mean, I think we look pretty clean. Um, Zai was much more, um, you know, he lost his wind um, more than it was anything to do with his knee. Hey, Brian, Harold Perkins there kind of moving to, I guess, strong side linebacker? Just yeah, that would be the, the, the best way to put it. Okay. What did you all think about him playing uh, back there? And is that really similar to what he was doing last season? It, it was similar. It's not the same. Um, we're asking him to fit in the box a little bit more than he did last year. He was strictly an edge player last year. Um, but But I thought that, there, there were some good things, things to build on, right? 
Um, I thought he started to feel a lot more comfortable. He was in the action a lot more. Um, there's growth there. I know he felt better and more comfortable. I, I think he would like to have a couple of plays back, maybe the first tackle of the game, had a chance for a safety. There's some things that he'd like back, but I thought by and large, I think he started to feel a lot more comfortable in playing um, and, and making some plays and playing with great energy. So um, I think that the first glance at it in terms of where he played at the SAM, um, I think we walked away feeling like, okay, we made some progress here. Brian, when you guys went back and watched the film, did you guys feel like Caden did enough to, to maybe be the first running back off the board for you guys going forward, or at least for now? Um, yeah, I think that's yet to be determined. I don't think we're, we're at a point where, you know, he's going to be the guy. I think we're still going to have all of those guys that are going to be part of it. But he certainly saw the things that we were looking for. Look, they, they were running some things inside with their tackles that were um, – kind of cutting off our combination blocks, which required a uh, patience to bounce at, and he really saw it well and, and was able to, you know, obviously get the ball outside. And, um, you know, that's – you can't teach that, right? I mean, you can talk about it. You can say, hey, this is what you need to do. But you've got to just naturally see it. And so the vision, um, the wherewithal to do that in-game – obviously is, is, a, is a positive for him moving forward. Coach, uh, have you heard back from the SEC offices on that punt play? Uh, we, we'll get it here within the next hour. We have not get, gotten back the voiceovers um, from, from John. We'll, we'll probably get them within the next hour. And uh, with, with Aaron Anderson, uh, how, in what specific areas of his game has he improved as a receiver uh, since he's had a really good start? This it's season? everything. It's it's everything he does in his life, <laughs> going to class, being on time, um, his practice habits, um, uh, framing the ball, catching the ball. It's just everything. It's just the natural maturity that comes with being in the program. You could see it coming, um, had a sense that this was going to kind of begin to – show itself for him where there was going to be more production because his process was so much better. And, and I think that that's going to continue for him. Uh, just Garrett's done so much right. Is there, is there anything – you spoke to the red zone issues. Is there anything there that you see that you would like him to tighten up? Well, certainly. I mean, I, I think everybody – the quarterback is going to be the most scrutinized position um, in college football. Look, Garrett – um, I think he leads the country in touchdown passes. Um, you know, he's – you know, we have no chance to win that game unless he makes some of the incredible throws. But there's more to it than just arm talent. Um, you have to bring some of the other intangibles. And, and, and he's growing too. Like, this, is, this was his third game on the road. And, and he shows the resolve and the leadership – uh, to keep us in there, you know, mounting a 55-yard drive, uh, you know, at the end of the game there to, to get us in the end zone. Um, so, look, I mean, we, we, we all have to get better. Coaches and players alike, he does as well. Um, we, got, we got a talented quarterback, um, but, but he knows that there's some growth there. And the great thing about it is there's not a – more committed guy on our roster. Um, we've got a lot of committed guys, but um, Garrett's so committed that he's going to work at his craft. Yeah, Brian, c considering the, the opponent Saturday and the atmosphere uh, in a conference game, uh, and I guess a hyped up crowd, do you feel like you learned more about your team this past Saturday than the, the first two games combined? Heck yeah, absolutely. You learn so much about, you know, <laughs> Look, just being on the sideline and, and listening to your team and how they're handling setbacks, like snapping the ball, you know, when you're not supposed to snap it. How are the other players talking to him and, and, and propping him up in that situation and, and making sure that, that he can bounce back from that? And, and just hearing the positive talk on the sideline when we're down, Kyron Lacey's going up and down the sideline, 
you know, when we took the lead in the fourth quarter saying 856, 856, remember 856 against USC. So you learn that this group understands that there's so much more to this game than just between the lines. It's, it's between the ears as well. And um, it's a group that wants to do well. They know what they have to clean up, but you learn so much about a group. When you have a resilient group like that, you want to coach harder. You want to do more for them and make sure that you eliminate. Because if you eliminate those mistakes, like I said, you could have put 50 points or more on the board. And if, you, if your run support and structure is better, you eliminate those runs and, and, and they don't get into the 30. So um, that's why our, our staff is so anxious and, and uh, excited about getting back out on the practice field. And Coach, over here, so right here. Um, so the defense, I know that was a, a positive performance from Saturday as far as rushing the passer, or able to get the, the quarterback five times, forced three fumbles. So what can you say about the improvement from just the, the ability to pass rush and get to the quarterback and make some of those splash plays? Yeah, I mean, look, whatever the narratives are, I, I can't control them, but I know what I look at, right? And I know what I see, and, and what I see is a defense that internally – uh, especially uh, when we all thought that, you know, our defensive tackles were you know, going to be a, a, a problem for us. They're, they're playing fundamentally sound football for us. Our ends, uh, our Swinson was named the, defense, the SEC defensive player um, of the week. Savion Jones is playing really well. Gabe Relaford is, is playing as a true freshman. Womack was hurt. We'll get him back. He adds to the depth. We were able to move Paris Shand inside to help with that. That front is doing very well. And then we know about the talented three linebackers. It's about continuing to build the back end of our defense and continue to contest catches, um, be, be sound in run support with, with our secondary. But more than anything else is create havoc. And, and we did that. You know, we got the ball out. Uh, we came up with turnovers. We came up with key stops. Obviously, we talked about the bad snap. We came up with a field goal stop right there, uh, which was huge in the game. Um, we get the interception from, from Zai. So there's a lot going on there. We're not there yet. There's no doubt. But we are making the progress necessary with the group of guys that we have. Um, we're making the kind of progress where I feel like we're not there yet, but we're getting closer. So continue to rotate a lot at safety this week. Did you think you found something in particular, Deshaun Spears? How would you evaluate her first time in an SEC environment like that? Yeah, I mean, first time, you know, he wasn't put in a lot of high stress situations purposely. Uh, we wanted him to get into the game. You know, we played a lot of one high. We kept him in the middle of the field. I thought he did a nice job. Uh, we'll continue to develop him. Uh, Major Burns played a lot more safety uh, because we're playing with the Buffalo package with the Sam linebacker being in there instead of the star. Um, but at first glance, it looked pretty good. Um, there'll be other guys that will play there as well, but um, we were pleased. Uh, Mason Taylor, it seems like when you need a play, you're kind of in a rut. It seems like he comes through. Pretty often. How, how nice is it to have a reliable tight end like him to make those catches? No doubt. I mean, and we even talked about it at halftime. We probably could have targeted him with all of their actions with led by their linebackers downhill. There, there were more opportunities for him to get the football maybe in some third down and short situations that we needed to target him even more. And, you know, I think he, I think he had eight to ten targets. Um, but I think what's exceptional about him is his yards after the catch. You know, he's been able to do some really big uh, things for us in yards after catch. And obviously, he's got a great relationship with Nuss Meyer. He sees him. He knows where he is. He's looking for him. Um, he's been great in line. He's done, he's done a lot of things for us that uh, sometimes don't even go noticed other than the passing. Uh, with Garrett, uh, he's, he's shown a real ability to be able to layer throws and, and – to put balls over linebackers' heads, even under pressure. That was the one throw to Anderson that really stood out to me. So how has he been able to improve in that area of his game? 
You know, I think that's always been kind of his strength relative to um, his accuracy, and he's not afraid to put it in tight windows. He has great confidence in his ability uh, to throw. We, we call phone booth throws, right? Throw it in a phone booth. And he's okay with tight coverage because he has just a, a great confidence in his ability to put it on somebody. You know, I, I think it's just the continued development of, you know, not all throws in those situations are green light throws. You know, some of them have to be checked down, some of them. And he's learning that. And, and the great part about it, as I said earlier, um, this is his third game. <laughs> and uh, it's only going to get better. Um, and that's what I hope our fans see, um, that you've got a quarterback that um, after three games is, is uh, leading the country in touchdown passes, and he's only going to get better. Yeah, so we count back. So the red zone, the white zone, and the blue zone, like on the flag. So red, white, and blue. So red, 20, white, 10, blue, 5, and in. So red, white, and blue zone um, in terms of the scoring zone for us. Yeah, sorry about that. Yep. All right, thank you.